Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the show. So I decided to start this podcast, and I made my first episode within 24 hours. So fair warning, we're a little unfiltered here. I can be a little much, according to a lot of old white people that I have come across in my day. At the end of the day, this podcast was born because I am a little sick of the holier-than-thou fitness preachy high horse that way too many people are on and way too many people are listening to and it is giving this idealized version of fitness that isn't applicable to a lot of people and I would like to kind of break this down into something that you can apply to your own life that isn't going to wreck your sanity. So despite this podcast kind of coming out of nowhere. I'm armed with some bullet points that I have in front of me and like three coffees. So we're going to hope for the best. And just as my intro episode, I feel like I should tell you a little bit about who I am, why you should care what I have to say, why you may not give a shit what I have to say, either of which is okay with me. But my name is Heather. I own and run a gym with my partner. I've been in the fitness industry and specifically the nutrition industry for years. I have gone from totally recreational to competitive, to not giving a shit, to being burned out, to a really good happy medium. And I've tried every diet on the planet. I've done every workout format you can imagine. I've pretty much fucked up any possible thing that you can think of from the time I picked up my first Vogue magazine and saw how skinny the models were until this point in my life. And I had a poster, I remember, that said, eating dinner isn't very Chanel. And if you asked 11-year-old me, I lived by that. Now, I didn't have the slightest clue of culturally what Chanel was, how much it cost, let alone owning anything from the brand. But I really, for some (laughs) strange reason, felt I resonated with that and thus sort of began, I guess you could call it a fitness journey. It was definitely not about fitness at the time. My point is that I've come from that and now, you know, 14 years later, I've never been more chilled out, leaner, stronger, happier, and I feel that I'm finally at a place that I can say I'm genuinely happy with while not driving myself up a wall. So my point with having this podcast and my goal is to have people on that know much more than I do to bring a sense of realness to fitness and well-being because I feel like that's incredibly overdue at this point. And also bridge the gap between being this all-out person who can never have fun and only eats lettuce or the opposite end of the spectrum where we're borderline sabotaging our health on purpose because it's humorous at that point. And there are so many people that reside in the middle and yet everything out there is sort of catered for one extreme or the other. Something that really kind of brought this to my attention is I had not one but two clients in a single day kind of come to me jokingly but not and sort of say you know oh like I I would love to be you know fit but I you know I drink wine every night or oh I would love to but you know me and my husband go out to dinner three or four nights a week because of clients or whatever and these people are you know they're working out they're my clients and they are paying attention but yet they've deemed themselves unworthy of fitness <laughs> or calling themselves fit because they have these small things that make them happy and i think most of us have those small things that make us happy unless you are going for the olympics you probably don't have to be perfect and that if i can show you what to sacrifice and what to not sacrifice and how you can piece this together to strategically fit your lifestyle while also working towards maybe the fitness goals that you've been thinking about, I feel like I've won. Not taking care of your health because you know you drink or you smoke or you do hard drugs every Saturday, like whatever. I don't judge. It's ridiculous. It's 
if you smoke enough weed to kill Snoop Dogg last night, you still have to get up and get your shit done. And if you have really intense goals, you really have to make sure that you can get up and get your shit done. Maybe there's less room for error there. Maybe there's less room for acting like you are Snoop Dogg. But how much we scale that back is really dependent on the outcomes we want. And my whole point is that your intensity of your efforts has to at some point line up with the intensity of your goals if you want to reach them. Or we have to redefine your goal so that your intensity is realistic but can be attained. A big disconnect I see with this especially is the eat healthier and work out more plan that everyone seems to implement the second they decide that they have any sort of wellness goal. And there's nothing wrong with eating healthier or working out a little bit more. For most people, that's a great start, and I don't want to discredit that. I mean that at some point, you have to get a little bit more specific, and some people don't, and that can keep you from your goals in itself. If you want to win a bodybuilding show, eating a little bit less and moving a little bit more is probably not going to get you to the place on the stage that you want to be, and if we can kind of define our plans in accordance to our goals, we're probably more likely to reach them. So I want to go through kind of a few that I see the most often, some things that I see people implement and go through these stages of, and they come out on the other side unhappy. And maybe you'll resonate with some of these, and maybe this will help you figure out how to get out of this cycle. So obviously, the first one I see all the time is extremely low calories. I'm not even going to grace this one with that much time yet because I'm sure I'll dive super deep into this in quite a few episodes and time and time again. The basics are someone will over restrict. They'll massively scale back how many calories they're eating. Eventually, your body figures this out that you're massively under eating and it fights back. Evolutionarily, it thinks that you are starving. So it's going to motivate you to go get as much food as possible. You can't sustain it because you cannot fight your body and you end up way back to square one, if not five pounds heavier than when you started and you're pissed and then you stay there and then cycle begins again, right? That is so, so common and we'll dive into that all over the place, I'm sure, but for the sake of time, the next one is the diet without the base. This is common as well, but a lot of the time it's not as obvious how this went wrong. And what I mean by that is people will go into a fat loss phase, which is all fine and good, even if they do it incredibly well. So they finish up, they lose the weight, and they look completely different than how they expected to look at the end of this journey. A lot of people picture their leaner body with some muscle mass and, you know, the shape or the tone that everyone talks about. And muscle tone is a whole nother topic that I could vomit over, but I digress. They never spent time in maintenance or in a surplus building muscle. So they're just skinnier. There's nothing wrong with that, except if you think you're going to finish dieting and look like a superhero or, you know, the gym shark model who yells at you to do the jumping squats in your living room, you're bound to be a little bit disappointed by this outcome. And unfortunately, muscle mass and strength and all of these things, they're not built on a thousand calories a day. And People will argue with me left and right. What if you're a really small person? Well, this is wrong with me or I dieted for too long. There is little to no reason that you should ever be eating even close to 1,000 calories because most toddlers' average need for calories is about 1,300. So unless you are a toddler-sized adult, please don't come at me. I don't want to hear it. You need to increase your caloric intake and you need to do some resistance training. And you're probably going to get those results and be a lot happier with them, even if, you know, you're not rapidly losing weight like we're all taught is the only measure of progress. The final incredibly common example is the idea of just doing what everybody else told you that you should want rather than figuring it out for yourself. There is this trend, especially in the CrossFit space, which is obviously where I am most of the time, where caring purely about performance and not at all about aesthetics is sort of taking over. 
And I want to make it incredibly clear that I love that shit. I really do. It is the only way that I think for myself I was ever going to get out of my own head with body image and really just figuring out how to maintain a healthy lifestyle without going insane was to focus on performance. That is what took me out of that mindset. And that's going to be different for everybody, but I'm definitely not shitting on that by any means. I really do believe that that's amazing for a lot of people, especially for a lot of women. However, (laughs) it suddenly became not okay in a sense to care what you look like. And I kind of call bullshit there. I don't really think that there's anything wrong with having aesthetic goals. I also don't think there's anything wrong with not really caring if you can do muscle ups or handstand walk, or if you just want to look like your bicep is about to rip the sleeve of your shirt, there's nothing wrong with that. Do your thing. You are not going to get there by doing endless handstand walking and muscle ups. You might get a little bit bigger. You might get a little bit stronger. That's all fine and good. I'm not discrediting that. However, there's a much more optimal way to purely bodybuild if we're not really caring about performance. And figuring out where your priorities lie is the first step to being effective. If you want a little bit of both, you can have a little bit of both. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. The big problem I see is kind of telling yourself you don't really care how your clothes fit or you know if you gain weight or whatever it is but you do and and that's okay i think you are much better off being honest with yourself and therefore reaching your goals and doing it more quickly and being happy than you are kind of telling yourself you should care about your performance or you should care about your aesthetics or whatever it is And then you're just kind of being inefficient at getting to where you want to be. If this podcast can help you figure out what you want, how to get it, how to not be an insufferable human being in the process, I will call it a success. (laughs) And if you can leave, um, you know, a comment on this YouTube video, if you're seeing it there or a review or share this, I would be forever grateful. Until next time, just remember that it's really not that fucking serious.